Thank you very much, Radhika. Thanks to uh, International Manifesto Group and the uh, Friends of Socialist China. Uh, I'm very honored to be among the, these group of speakers and uh, it is important to hear all of the viewpoints. It was very educational for me. Um, I do not want to get into the politics uh, of this issue as most of the speakers spoke about it. I particularly identify with uh, the presentation of my dear comrade, Sarah Flanders, who put the whole thing in a proper perspective, so I don't need to repeat that. So what I will do is just go over the report of our trip to, to China and talk about what we observed. This trip was a part of an official delegation uh, invited by uh, Chinese People's Association for Peace and Disarmament, which is for us, and for those who are familiar, equivalent of ECAP in Cuba and Simon Bolivar Institute in Venezuela. They are related to the uh, International Department of the Communist Party and also part of the International uh, Foreign, Foreign Ministry of China. Uh, this was a formal invitation, a bilateral meeting between the two organizations. Um, the talk of uh, this visit was going on for a long time between us, but due to restrictions, uh, the COVID restrictions that China had for a long time over the trip to China, uh, was delayed and until it was possible as soon as the gates were open and uh, we traveled to China in November uh, of 2023. It was a short trip, too short for us, but we learned a lot from it. Um, we visited, uh, first we arrived in Beijing and we were there for two days and most of our formal discussions were held in Beijing, and then um, traveled to Shanghai on a bullet train, as Prince mentioned, which was it's by itself fascinating, um, to visit the development plans in China and the projects that they are implementing um, for a future model of urbanization and, and, and development which was in itself fascinating. A lot of our friends it's, uh, spoke about it here. So I, I will not repeat that. But the main thing uh, that we discussed was first, we had a kind of a Zoom meeting, joint Zoom meeting from Beijing um, with some scholars, Chinese scholars in Washington, DC. That was the first meeting we had, which was about US politics and US-China relations, uh, which was very in depth analysis of what you know stands in the future with regard to everything that is going on between China and the United States. Um, of course, there were very all the speeches were very optimistic that with the policy that China is uh, you know following and advancing, um, ultimately the victory will come with the with the uh, successful development towards a better new world order. Um, the second part of our discussions, which were actually the most formal part, was the bilateral meeting that we had with the CPAPD leadership. And this was about actually the content of Xi Jinping's, President Xi Jinping's theory of socialism with Chinese characteristics in the new era. Uh, of course, this was a general topic of the discussion, but we went through all the aspects of Xi Jinping's thoughts, and they explained to us um, about different aspects, and actually they gave us a present, a five-volume uh, book of Xi Jinping's thoughts that we brought with us, uh, which we, I haven't gotten to read it yet, but we will... <laughs> We will take time to read all of it, but but it's it's, it's fascinating to have that. Uh, but the discussion was a kind of exchange. Of course, comrades from China presented the various aspects of, for example, China's uh, global initiative, security initiative, China's diplomatic uh, approach, China's uh, approach to peace, China's uh, relations with the United States, and all those aspects, each one on a different topic. 
uh, subtopic and we discuss that and we exchange. Of course, their presentations uh, was followed by feedback and questions from our side uh, about the issues that were raised. Um, it was very illuminating and informative and we really got a full grasp of what Chinese approach is the whole to the whole world situation. And it was very educational for us. And it really helped us understand what we need to do here in the United States, in fact. Um, following that, we of course had some visits to the, to the museum that the comrades mentioned about the history of Chinese uh, Communist Party. We had various visitations of different places. In Shanghai, it was mostly about China's development. Uh, one of our speakers spoke about the China's Urban Development Center. We spent a lot of time there and we were informed about various aspects of what it means to have a socialist city. <laughs> um, uh, one thing that was very critical, they, they told us that the way things are designed in these new cities, all the social services for the citizens are within a 10 to 15 minutes walk of wherever you are in the city which to me and to us was very fascinating and unbelievable that you can design a city of a million people uh, with those characteristics. But they have they are thinking that far in advance about, about what they are trying to build. And we saw examples of it, and we were humbled by everything uh, that the Chinese are doing. Um, the main thing was our meeting after us at, towards the end of the trip, that was based on how we can cooperate between the two organizations. And we, of course, both sides recognize the necessity of the Chinese peace uh, organization, I work closely with the US peace organizations to implement the, a peaceful uh, policy for both sides and advance the cause of peace between the United States and China. And for that purpose, we agreed on certain principles and agreements. One, that uh, both organizations agreed to inform the other partner of the latest developments in each country, our analysis of how we see things in our country and relay that information to the other side. They would do also the same thing for us to keep us updated about the advancements uh, in China and the new developments and uh, for us to relay this to the public in our own countries. So um, that is one aspect of it. Uh, we both agreed that people-to-people -people, uh, exchanges are critical in this area. And we agreed to organize from both sides um, delegations, not only delegations of organizations between ourselves, but delegations, public delegations, inviting people, the youth, labor, labor other professional, people to have, to send delegations and have the exchanges of delegations between us so that people become familiar with the realities of China. And one thing that we promised them, they didn't they need this kind of promise from, uh, we didn't need that kind of promise from us, was to debunk all of the lies about China in the United States and help overcome that war, Cold War mentality that the establishment, our establishment in the United States is, is pushing. So with those commitments, we came back and we are determined to follow up on all of the agreements that we have made with Chinese organization or sister organization. I should mention that the Chinese are very much interested in dealing with the peace movement and they showed much of interest in getting involved in the world peace movement. And one aspect of it is that prior to our trip, they had invited a 22 delegation of the leadership of the World Peace Council to China. And after us, they were inviting, they had invited and it was happening, uh, a delegation of the Chinese, uh, of Vietnam Peace Committee to, to China. I think they, the two, the two sides, the Vietnam and the United States are critical to the Chinese strategy uh, moving forward. And I think uh, they are very, very clear and conscious about the plan and the details of it and steps that are needed to be taken. So uh, we are honored to be a partner with them right now. And we are doing our best to pursue the, the agreements that we made with Chinese 
Association for Peace and Disarmament. Thank you very much.